Sorry, can you hear me? Can you hear me? We are stood at Manchester Square, right next to the Manchester pub on the promenade, if you know it. But we're not actually stood on the promenade, that's down there. But it is very busy down there, so I'm avoiding going down there, but I'll just show you. You can see the big wheel behind me, uh, just there. There you go, you can see the big wheel. Now, I need to get this live chat on because I can't see it. Right, where are we? Uh, live chat, there we go. So, hello everybody, thanks for joining us on this live scream. So we're gonna start doing a tour very shortly. So we're gonna make our way, or we're gonna start here at Manchester Square with a ghost story. And then we're gonna head up Lytham Road for another ghost story. And then we're gonna head into Tramtown. And we're gonna be going into various buildings and dark areas in Tramtown. Woo! Some with lights on, some with lights off. We've got torches and everything. And we're gonna be going around and obviously getting uh, some stories off David. This is David behind us. Give us a wave, David. You may recognize him from the Tram Town video we did before. But we have got a special guest with us tonight. If you, if you watch a load of YouTubers in Blackpool, you may recognize this gentleman here. Stephen from Walk on the Wild Side. Get him, get him subscribed, he's fantastic. Go have a look, I, I've watched Steve for years. He does a lot of the quirky side of Blackpool. The good stuff and the bad stuff. So he's going live on his channel as well. So he'll be live same time as me. You can see him doing his thing behind now. So yeah, we've got Steve from Walk in the Wild Side. We've got David, who I've just shown you. And we've also got a guy from Tram Town, a health and safety guy as well, just to make sure, sh show, make sure we don't fall down any pits or any holes. Because <laughs> it is dark in there. Hello girls. And then we're gonna head up to Tram Town. I'm just waiting for everyone to finish the stuff and then we'll get started. When we're going to Tram Town, we're going to have a lady with us called Janet. Is that right, David? Yeah. Hope Janet. So. Yeah. And someone on the motorway. I wrongly advertised her as a psychic medium. She's not a medium. She's a large. No, she's not either. Of them. <laughs> she's not a psychic medium. She's actually what we call a sensitive. A sensitive. Um, so a slight difference. I don't know the difference, but a sensitive is different to a medium. But anyway. She's going to be chipping in as well throughout the night and pointing out things as we make our way around. But anyway, happy Halloween or hello scream to everybody. And also, welcome to the live scream. <laughs> Just waiting for Steve to finish his bit and then we're going to get going. So if you don't know where we are currently, we're stood. What's this road called, David? Uh, it's Lytham Road. Lytham Road. Yeah. So the junction with uh, the front. Where Manchester the Manchester pub is, right Manchester on the corner. Square. It's called Manchester Square. And then we're going to head up Lytham Road in a little bit and then into Tram Town, which is on Rigby Road. Right. Uh, big thanks to Ian Fleming. Thanks, mate. Not that Ian Fleming. <laughs> big thanks to Ian for your super chat. Thanks a lot, mate. But also while we're here as well, I just want to mention, um, I've put a link in the description below. And when we're going to Tram Town, they are raising money to fix the roof at Tram Town because it is knackered and it's falling apart. So if you fancy donating any money to Tram Town, there's a link in the description below for donations towards Tram Town to fix their roof. And also you can support Tram Town by going on their tours. So they do tram tours daily throughout the week. You can sign up to them. They're only a couple of quid to get a full tour around the depot, including the illumination trams as well. And you can do that and that all goes towards fixing the building. But also, while we're here tonight, David, our resident tour guide here, this one, he's going to be doing, very soon, some ghost tours at Tram Town. So they're gonna be starting to do actual ghost tours as well. So keep your eye on their website for when those are starting, but you can sign up to those as well. And again, all that money goes towards Tram Town. So I think, I'm just going to read a couple of comments that we'll get started. So Jack Thomas Mountain says, I was in Blackpool over the half term week. It was a lovely holiday. Brilliant. Just got to say as well, before we start, um, if the stream cuts out at any point, I'll try join back on again and carry on. But if I can't and we lose signal altogether and the stream stops, then I'll end the stream tonight. And what I'll do is I'll keep recording on here and then I'll put it out as a full video tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. I'll be doing that anyway. I'll be 
basically releasing this live stream tomorrow night at seven o'clock as an actual video. But if it drops out, then you'll get to see the full video tomorrow night at seven instead. So hopefully we keep the signal. I've got a full signal down here and we can continue, but you never know. So we'll see. So I think Steve might be ready to go. So I'll just check with him. Are you ready, Steve? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Now. So I think we're ready to go. Okay, we're going to be heading towards the track chest. We're going to be seeing the ghost right away from Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, all, we're all scared now, we're right. <laughs> Over to you, David. Okay. Well, this area of Manchester Square is where one of our first stories starts. Um, well, I actually can tell you a couple about uh, trams that have stories attached to them as well. Um, all three um, had stories attached, but only two of them survived now. Um, and all strangely have the same last number, which is rather unusual. Uh, if you've been to Blackpool, you've seen the balloon cars. They're the double-deckers, uh, 1930s. And the story relates to 702, 712 and 722, which is rather unusual. Uh, 702 still survives, and I think it's still at the depot here. Uh, that apparently set off by itself one day. Uh, it would appear more likely that it was that a driver didn't quite take the driver key out uh, and it made its way all the way up here. This is many, many years ago, before Jamie was in charge. It wouldn't have happened under Jamie's charge, I know that. <laughs> um, but it got all the way to the point at Manchester Square. The points were against it. So it made its way all the way down there to the section where it joins the main promenade there. Yeah, where those cars are. Seven, seven, uh, is now at Kreich in Derbyshire. That went down to the museum at uh, National Tramway Museum in um, And that had a story where a girl had fallen down the stairs, a little girl, and she broke her neck sadly and died. And then what happened was that the seats would f fall backwards and forwards by themselves, bells would ring, uh, blinds would change by themselves, that sort of, you know, the usual things that happen to, to trams when they're haunted, presumably. Footsteps on the top deck. And the same with 722, which was a gentleman who fell down those steps many, many years ago again, and he died. And again, same strange things happened on the top deck of 722 as well. That one was scrapped a few years ago, although a lot of the parts were kept to keep the other ones going. So even though 722 is actually now no longer as a tram, it is a set of parts for any restorations that happen within Tram Town in the next few years of a balloon tram, because they kept all the panels and seats and bits and pieces, but it wasn't viable to restore it at the time after it had a small accident. Cyber leader Andy says he saw it at Critch. So he's seen it. It's, oh, don't call it Critch, it's Critch. Critch. <laughs> <laughs> mental. Critch. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the super chat. But Thank yes, you. it's there down there at Critch. Yes, that's right. Um, right, the one that relates specifically to this area, I was just talking a general one there about trams in general. There is a phantom tram as well, which we'll come to later on, that's supposed to haunt the that's stop true. at Claremont, um, near the hotel up at the North Shore, but I'll come to that in a bit. But the one to, relating specifically to Manchester Square is uh, apparently a gentleman who was a night watchman here many, many years ago, and he's seen quite regularly by drivers in this sort of area here in the middle of the track they drive through him because he literally steps in front of him at the last second they think they've killed him by hitting him and yet when they stop the tram only a, you know a tram length further on and go back to see what terrible thing they've done to this guy there's nothing to see the guy has disappeared completely he holds a little red lantern uh, and waves it like that sort of thing to stop the tram. The tram goes ploughing through him and uh, yet when the driver stops in a, an emergency stop there's nothing to see when they look at the back of the tram where they would expect to see a rather not very happy person. Um, so that's the story that relates specifically to Manchester Square and that happens apparently quite regularly between the drivers who've told us Brilliant. the stories that they've, uh, they've come across over the years. So where's our next stop David? The next one, well we'll just walk a little bit down there. The actual place is a lot further down there which we're not going to because it would be too far to walk but Lytham Road has two stories that relate to this area as well uh, so if we just go a little bit further on I can show you something that relates to a bit of Blackpool's history as well so we're heading up Lytham Road uh, we're going to get our next story a bit further up here and then we're going to head towards Tram Town where the ghost hunting really starts when we head inside the dark building <laughs> now just in case you didn't know, I bought myself this amazing torch. This 
is so bright it's really good so we can use it in there I bought it especially for tonight I needed a decent one anyway but the um, I just want to say a big thanks to Samantha as well for moderating our chat tonight she's a fellow member on the channel she's moderating our chat so we shouldn't get any rubbish messages or any uh, spam coming through but hello to everybody anyway my chat keeps going so let me get it back up um, where are we top chat top chat so Lee UK 84 used to go to Blackpool evening David Johnson evening Sam M uh, hi Dennis Nick Thomas Queen Sammy we've got nearly 300 in tonight which is amazing if you can as well please like the stream click that like button either down below or above I don't know where it is these days but just hit that live button that, that like button should I say right back to David Hang on. right we're now outside the old lifeboat house the old lifeboat station this is where the lifeboat used to be housed many many years ago it's now more on the promenade and it used to be taken by horses along over the, the promenade and it wasn't as flat and straight as it is now many years ago but this has now been converted into a well it was recently like a um, like a hub for, for young people and stuff. I don't know what it's doing at the moment. It's a bit sort of it's like just been uh, abandoned at the moment. But anyway, uh, but it relates to a story perhaps. Many many years ago, there were houses around this area before the hotels were built, and one of them used to put a, a light in the window to pretend that it was a lighthouse and it was guiding the the, the ships safely to shore. What it was actually doing is making sure that they ran aground and then they could plunder the uh, the uh, cargo. Uh, there was apparently a gentleman that you may have heard of through Darren's um, previous um, the Rakes Hall one. The Rakes Hall one. There was a Mr. Butcher who one minute didn't have, well, let's say we didn't have a lot of money. Next minute there was a, a, a beach ship which got emptied very quickly. Uh, and then the next minute he bought Rakes Hall, which is a huge mansion. So, you know, do the math sort of thing, I think. Um, so that relates to the candle that was put in the, the window of the, uh, of the house along here somewhere, not exactly sure where, but it obviously relates into the lifeboat because they would have been launched to, to rescue the people from the boat that had been wrongly brought ashore. Um, the other story that relates is much further down um, Lytham Road and off to the right a little bit. There's a place called the Coach House and it is a hotel. I'm not trying to scare anybody who's staying there at the moment. But it used to be uh, run by a lady called Elaine Smith, who's well known in Blackpool. She's called Mrs. Blackpool. She's uh, to do with the Civic Trust and, and all those sort of organisations to do with the town and its history. And she loves the town. Uh, she used to run that as a hotel many, many years ago. And that had a resident ghost. And it was so regularly seen that when she left on holiday, she used to leave the place uh, in, in its capable hands and used to uh, say goodbye. I think it was called Fred or something like that. So, bye Fred, look after the place for us. And they'd go off on holiday and the, the ghost would look after the place, apparently. So it was uh, that was related to one specific room. I forget the room number. It might have been, I think it was room 12. Um, so that was... Uh, the story of the coach house which is basically just off down here and then off to the right uh, towards the south shore end. but it wouldn't be too far to walk today yeah um what you also have here not if you can just see in the road there that's a bit of tram track because the trams used to go off down there that was the living road route that used to go down to the airport so that where that taxi is you just see to the left of it um there's a, this bit of a sort of a line in the road yep. that is an old tram track it's all still down there they just covered it over in 1963. so we've got the old tram tracks tram there tracks going up Lytham road you can actually see they're just little bits poking out they're literally under the tarmac yeah. there you can yeah. down, down at station road there's a big curve of it actually yeah. been, so this is Lytham road here it goes all the way to the airport yes. road. Very long road. right where's next david are we heading so, in as well go and do the big stuff and going around the depot right so we're making our way over to tram town now so i've got to try cross two roads at a busy junction while i'm talking to you lot on a camera so i'm gonna pay attention to the road uh, we're okay at the minute i'm gonna zoom across you can see the tower just behind me over here uh there see it all lit up so we're making our way down Rigby Road now and uh, we're heading into Tram Town. So what we're going to start, we're going to start in some of the workshops at the side of Tram Town, which are actually part of the bus depot. And it's also where they repair the trams at the depot. 
bow as well. And then we're going to make our way into the... Now one of the rooms is floodlit, so it's quite bright. But they're then going to go into a back room behind, which is pitch black. And I'm going to get my torch out. And we're going to do some uh, walking around there and a bit of listening as well. But we're also going to make our way onto some of the trams inside and try go up the top and walk around the trams because they are really creaky and spooky. I've already done it earlier on. I did a risk assessment with the health and safety guy and we went on top of one of the trams and it was really spooky. <laughs> so we're going to go up one of the trams and we're going to go into some offices as well. There's plenty of stuff to see in Tram Town. So as you can see, we're making our way down Rigby Road now. Uh, there's the tram depot just behind me. It's already getting darker. And uh, we will be joined shortly by Janet as well, who's our um, sensitive, not psychic medium. We've got uh, Steve from Walk on the Wild Side following us here. He's streaming as well. Anyway, as it gets dark, I'm just going to put my little light on because you might not see me. There we go. So I've, see, I've come well prepared tonight. I've got myself a little light on the camera. I've got a battery plugged in, so it shouldn't run out of battery. Um, but forgive me if I'm not looking at the camera because I can't really see it on the screen. So I'm constantly looking here rather than down there. But anyway, I'm walking across the tram tracks just down here now. So this is the main gates into Tram Town. That's the main depot there. A lot of the illumination trams are out on the promenade at the minute going up and down because obviously the illuminations are on in Blackpool. So all the illumination trams are not in there currently, but they might be a bit later when we get in there. I think we're making our way down. I'm going to go into a side entrance down here and start in the depot. Janet's on her way, she got stuck in the traffic. <laughs> oh, so our, um, I keep wanting to say specialist, yeah. our sensitive, sensitive Janet. So she's not a medium because she would have known about the traffic, you see. Exactly, she's stuck in traffic, so she will be here later, she'll be joining us soon. Yeah. Uh, typical Blackpool, the M55 was a nightmare coming yeah, in. Yeah, there was this bridge that they're doing on the M6 as well, she had to get to go through all that. So. Brilliant. Right, anyway. So are we starting down there? Yeah, we'll we? go down there. Yeah. 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 I think we're heading down to a side gate down here and we're going to make our way through the various buildings because what you see here is just where they store the trams. There's also workshops. If you watched my Tram Town video that I did here back in summer, you'd have seen all that. But they've got workshops down here. This is the fitting shop. The fitting shops and all that sort of stuff. This big building inside of me here. Yeah. They run all the way down Rigby Road. Uh, we're going to start in some of them and make our way through and into the tram sheds and then the back room as well. So, yeah, oh, we might even look at a basement as well. We can't go in it because there's asbestos in there, but there's a window that can shine a torch through that you can see inside there. So we're going to see plenty of stuff. I'm hoping it's going to be action-packed tonight. The boring bits are going to be this bit where we're making our way between places, but we're almost at the gate. Wait for these to catch up, I'm going ahead. And uh, yeah, we'll be in very shortly and we'll start another story inside here and uh, give you a tour around as well. We're not, we're not just gonna get stories, we're also gonna be listening and uh, walking around and exploring as well. I've never done this before, so apologies if it cuts out or if you, I don't know, if there's any technical issues. I've never done a live stream in a building before. I've always been outside and wandering around on the promenade and I've not done one at night before but you lot have been nagging me for years to do a, a Halloween video so here, it is. here we are this area behind us by the way let me just turn the camera around the, yeah towards the tower is where the original depot was from 1885 the first electric street tramway certainly in Britain possibly in the world and it started originally the year before in 1884 there was a, an experiment in the winter gardens well gardens really uh, as they existed then and uh, that was an electrical demonstration of what could be electric tramway uh, and the council liked it and being very forward-thinking they'd had the world's first electric street lights in 1879 they decided to invest in the tramway and it was from literally where we are here up to Cocker Square just past the Metropole uh, and it was a conduit system, a bit like a scale electric set, if you like, where the, where the, the electricity was picked up from a little slot in the middle of the track. Wasn't very successful when you got the sea coming in it every few days. And the sand. And the sand. <laughs> uh, so it used to go poof, and that was the end of that for a day or two, and they used to have to borrow the uh, funeral horses from the 
and made it into a horse tramway until they fixed it. So and eventually they decided to go to the overhead system that you can see today. That was in 1899. But the depot was literally just behind us there, where they're building those houses on Fox Hill now. It's all demolished now, isn't it? Yeah, it's all long gone, unfortunately. But the little bit of track that you can see there going under those cars is the original route that went out onto Princess Street and, and off onto the prom and then off to Cocker Square. Brilliant. So that's still there. So, right, so we'll go in here. I think we're heading inside. We're going to start in the depot. Uh, I'll just turn the camera around so you can see me. So we're making our way inside. See some uh, tram tracks just down here, look. Where they used to come in off the main road here. So these used to be tram sheds many years ago, but they're all used for buses now. And they use them for repairing trams as well. So, yeah. So we're actually, yeah, a track here as well from the we're actually on the site now anyway, we're making our way around yeah, okay. inside Tram Town or the uh, Blackpool Transport Services as it's now. And then we're going to be heading inside in a minute. We've got to follow the footpaths down here as well, they're all marked out. Because yep. there is buses coming in and out and also trams coming in and out further up. They will stop soon. Um, but yeah, the buses are going to be all night. So we need to be wary of the moving traffic as well. We can't get it closed off just for us. <laughs> they need, they're needed. The promenade is absolutely packed, just so you know. So I'll just turn the camera around. So as you can see, we've got the buses here parked up. And we're going to head through this door here into the workshops. Here we go. Is it dark? It is dark in here. Yeah. So first dark room. Let me get my uh, spotlight on. So, this is your paint shop. This is uh, where all the vehicles come to be painted when they've had the body work done and the fitting shops and all the bits underneath. Uh, and then the body's done next door, which we'll come to in a minute. And then finally, we're sort of doing it back to front in a way. Uh, but this is the, usually the last place the trams come into and the buses. Well, the buses not so much now because they have pop-on panels. If you have a damaged panel, you just take that one old one off and throw it in a skip and put a new one on and half an hour later it can be back on the road again. Years ago it would take perhaps up to a couple of weeks to get a really big job of a, of a damaged bus back on the road. And obviously that's not what it's about. You want the bus back on the road as soon as possible. So that's why those panels come on now. But the trams, they didn't have that sort of thing when they built these in the 1930s. So these have to be still done. Everything has to be done by hand and is painted by hand. One of the few places that still do everything by hand. There is no spray booth in Blackpool Transport Workshops anywhere. It never has been and probably never will. So it's all done by hand uh, here in the, in the paint shop. A bit of prehistory to the building, if you look up into the, into the rafters, uh, it's uh, alleged that these were actually originally an RAF hangar based somewhere in the uh, Manchester area. At the end of the First World War, they were sort of not needed anymore because they were surplus to requirements when we didn't have a war anymore. And so they were sold off quite cheap and it just happened to be the same time that Blackpool Corporation were wanting to expand their depot on this site rather than the site that we were pointing out before. And so it was perfect to have um, a building of this type that's a bit of an airfix kit really, just dismantling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that old, it only been up for a few years in Manchester and so it was still quite reasonable they bought it second hand and brought it here and made it into the the uh, workshops of the paint shop and the fitting shop uh, sorry the body shop um, the fitting shop was a, a separate item I think we should have a little ghost hunt a little wander around see yeah, if we can absolutely, see, yeah, see, you see can if we can hear that. anything or see, yeah, see if we can hear or see anything here yeah let's it's keep, a spooky place at night at the best of time let's keep quiet Things are creaking and making noises. I'll turn you around because you can see where we're going. See, I've got this really bright torch, but I'm going to put it on the dim setting because it's really bright. So we're going to head. I'm going to take you up there into the offices. So let's see if we can see anything up here or hear anything. But there's literally, there's five of us in here. So let's make our way up these stairs. So this is an old foreman's office in the uh, paint shop. Creaky floors. It's so dark in here. We can 
can't see out over the depot out there. Just turn the torch through. You can just see through there. We've got a minion there. But so far, it's, it's very eerie when you stop talking. We are going to try sit in the dark a bit later on and try to do a call out, see if we can hear anything. We're all a bit sceptical, but if you hear anything, I'll believe it. <laughs> Can't hear anything. Silence of the drums. Silence of the drums, love it. Right, I think we're going to head into another workshop in a minute. Let's get the uh, chat on again, the chat's disappeared. Thanks very much for your super chats, by the way. Right, let's head into the next to the body shop. building, which is the body shop. I'll just turn you around. Not the body shop like the shop where you buy all your cosmetics no. and stuff. <laughs> Not quite. Not so this is where they've got the horror tram or the terror tram, as it's known. And you can just see it there. Should you wear that bang then? You saw that. You'll get natural bangs in here. So, yeah. Expanding metal and well, that sort of thing. Yeah. Especially if it's windy, it'll be all sorts. In here, yeah. I mean, here we go. There's the terror tram. Terror tram, <laughs> which you used to see walking up and down the promenade and walking, driving up and down the promenade. <laughs> you see there, the terror tram. This is currently being repaired. <laughs> I've got an old. Did you say this is a Bolton car? Oh, no, no, uh, this is a Lytham, Lytham car. Lytham that was car. it. Yeah. So this is decades old. We covered this on the. Tram Town video, if you remember. This is under restoration at the minute. Just gonna have a look down here. It's got the old tram there, look. Let's step on it. Let's have a look. You can hear them talking down there, but. Imagine how old this is, and uh, how many people have been on this tram over the years. You can see out into the depot there. Let's have a look. But it's surreal, because it's so dark. The reason they call it the terror tram is we put 20 passengers on on the return journey, they never come back. Ooh. <laughs> I think you just made that up. I think you just made that up. Yeah, that's what I do with my tour. <laughs> yeah, if I fall, you might hear me swearing. <laughs> this is 704, balloon tram, that's privately owned now, and somebody's funding its restoration back in the 90s. So let's have a wander around here. Got some old machinery here. And we've got the uh, dinky toy tram under there, if you remember my tram time video. I covered this, it's the old dinky toy, it's like a miniature model of a tram, Martin tram, he's just going to take the cover off and we're going to have a look inside, you can see it's even got the seats inside look, look down here, so it's a little dinky toy tram, a little miniature Martin tram, there you go, it's got a motor as well, and it does move. 12 volt battery. 12 volt battery. It looks real, doesn't it? I remember, if you remember my Tramtown video, I shoved the camera inside there. Yeah, somebody's done it before, they put the camera inside it. That one, eh? Was it? Oh, yeah. so I, was it? I was here in summer. And over there, we've got a little dinky toy, which is an old standard uh, tram that was put for the. Um, made for the so let's have a look over here. It's David's telling uh, Steve the story of the dinky toy, but we already knew that because we've been here before. But. We'll just have a little wander around. 
Yes, somebody says, Mark Han says, if, I'm, if I fall, where I, was I pushed? <laughs> well, that'll be the question. If I feel a hand shoving me, you'll know about it. <laughs> Your name is Scream. David Johnson says the picture is pixelated. I think it might be a struggling in here a little bit, mate, because we are indoors now. I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Got another office in here. Very quiet in here. But yeah, we're going to make our way into a really dark room shortly. And we're going to do a, a lights out as well. We're going to sit still and turn the lights out and just listen. <laughs> Lots of uh, buses parked in here, as you can see. Palladiums. Brilliant. And where we're heading next, Jamie? To the left. Another bus there. So this is, you see the body shop, so they'll be having repairs in here. Getting fixed up, maybe a bit of damage on them. Lots of uh, things lying, lying around. Does all his prep work, so if he's fixing anything on site, he'll do it all here. Brilliant. It's got resident handymen in here and uh, painters and things like that. A lot of machinery here. So this is a lift. Yeah, it's all very weird because it's so quiet. We're heading through this door, Jamie, in the corner. So we're heading through that door there into the next room. What's the next room? There's a small passageway into the main yard. Oh, so it's just straight out into the main yard. Then we're going to make our way round to the next stop. Then we'll get a few more stories off David in a bit. He's got quite a few ghost stories to tell us, by the way. We've got... Um, Hopping on a bronze leg says a lad at work was bidding on a picture of a trolley bus on eBay. <laughs> Mark Mark says spooky atmosphere. We've got a step here, I've got to watch where I'm going. So apologies if I don't respond to the comments because I am watching where I'm walking. Talk. I've got to be mindful of where we are and what we're doing. So I can't read the comments all the time. I've got to say greetings to um, Germany as well. Got some people on from Germany. Again, if you're on the live stream, please click that like button and like the live stream. You can see the one of the trams here. And then uh, we've got somebody on from Apache Junction in Arizona, Stuart Bloodwell. Somebody from Arizona. Oh wow. <laughs> Um, and this is the nearest to get into the bus garage um, because it's an operational garage and it's a bit dangerous running buses in and out at the moment and those wandering around. But one of the stories relates to in that garage, uh, down at the far end, sort of level with the end of the, the tram sheds, but over slightly to the right, sorry, to the left uh, for most here, um, are the fuel tanks. And what happens there quite regularly, apparently, is there's a gentleman seen there in a flat cab and the reason that we know he shouldn't be there is that Blackpool Transport quite reasonably are very very uh, on the ball about high vis uh, especially at night as you can imagine and making sure everyone's visible and this guy is just in black he's just like a, like a duffel coat or a flat cap and all that sort of thing um, so the people are usually shouting at him where's your high vis and when they turn around he's disappeared mm -hmm. and he's down at the far end of the fuel tank so we're not sure who he is not, not really found out uh, what history he has, but he's seen quite regularly by a lot of the drivers who shout at him for not having the high vis, so we know that he's not really from uh, from 2022 anymore. So somebody just said to us, uh, why is the red tram outside? It's because they have to move them out to get the illumination trams out. Because the illumination trams are parked behind them in the depot, so they're up, they're up, running up and down the prom at the minute, obviously, because the, can't even speak, the illuminations are on. So the illumination trams are running up and down currently, so they've got to move these out of the way to get them out, and then they'll put them back afterwards. We've got people in from Northumberland, Liverpool, Arizona, Leicestershire, coming in from everywhere. But anyway, do they all still run? He says, uh, yeah, most of them do. Not all of them. Some of them are work in progress. 
13, 14 operational trams now. There you go, 40 operational 14. trams. 14, sorry, and 14. 70 here, is it? Yeah, and 52 here. Got 52 trams in here, apparently. Oh, a lot of these on this side are dead. A lot of these on this side don't run, don't work. They're probably going to be getting repaired at some point, and they're the work in progress, basically. And But the ones on the other side do, and a lot of them are out on the prom now, like I said. Uh, hopping on a bronze legs at Shipley Tram Shed tonight. I used to do gigs there years ago. Hello from West Sussex. Hello from Portugal. Hi to Portugal. And uh, saw the tram train at HMS Blackpool last weekend. Yeah, I saw it leaving earlier when I came in. It left the depot and went out. So I've just seen it not long ago. But uh, I'm not sure where we're heading now. Oh, we're going into the dark room at the back. That sounds ominous, doesn't it? So our, our sensitive has just arrived, Janet. I'll uh, stick her on camera in a minute. <coughs> Shall we introduce you? Oh, hello. Hello, everybody. This is Janet. Hi, everybody. So you're live. <laughs> <laughs> this is our sensitive Janet, who's going to be accompanying us. And just before we get in the nice dark room back there as well. Oh. Yeah. So we're just going to on the dark room. <laughs> we're just going to high vis her up, and then we're ready to go. You can see all the trams just behind us there. But the room that we're going in is through them doors there and it is pitch black. David says, do I have my own security? Yes, we do. Not security, they're more to make sure we don't fall down any holes or pits. Because <laughs> there's quite a few pits in here, as you can imagine, and they are deep. And you'd break a few bones if you fell in. So we've got to be careful on this tram tracks. There's bumps in the floor, there's loose things, there's uh, condemned rooms. Because this building is quite old. So again, the roof on this building is absolutely done for. And uh, there's a link in the description below for any donations, if you want to make a donation to fixing this roof. Because at the minute, it's a heritage tramway and they don't get the funding. Somebody's been seen in there, a girl. So that's been marked one of the engineers. So, so apparently in this room, this is an old foreman's office, I think. Let's have a quick look in. So we've got an old foreman's office here, a bit like on the buses, and uh, apparently a girl has been seen in there, a young girl. Somebody's, somebody's asked you, Janet, are you a tram spotter? A tram spotter? Um, no, but no. I, have a, I have a big affinity with the Santa Fe tram. <laughs> She's just into her Blackpool history, I think. <laughs> yes. Like me. Bob's got a, a story for you. Uh, a girl's been seen in this office twice. Um, one of the engineers told me that somebody was waiting for us. And I said, it can't be because it's locked. And the only key is with Paul. Mm. Um, Matt, yeah. Paul Gelly. Yeah, um, so so yeah. when I came up, there was nobody in there. Ooh. We've seen them twice. Saw yeah. them in there, yeah. well, unfortunately, we can't get in there Certainly because the it's locked yeah. up tonight. We can't go in there. It's all locked up. But yeah, a ghost has been seen in there, apparently. No, it's up in there. We've gone in there. So I think we're going to... Are we heading in there, David? Yeah. Um, just to tell you a little about the depot, it was built in the early 30s, and its first job actually wasn't as a depot. It was set out as one. It was always meant to be one. But its actual first job was an exhibition hall. And the very first thing that ever happened in here was a dog show. Ooh. Nothing to do with trams. It was already ready to go with tracks in and overhead and all that, but it was all part, uh, sort of um, partitioned over so you could have a dog show in the early days. And then when that had all finished, they'd use it for an exhibition hall for a, a few months and it reverted into what it would uh, eventually be for, well, hopefully for a long time to come, tram depot for Rig Rigby Road. So mm -hmm. it was actually an exhibition hall first. Right, so if we go towards the electric and this is where most of the things that have ever happened happen and as recently as just we're on Sunday we're talking Friday literally a couple of days ago something happened here that we still can't understand and explain so in this bit we're going into now Ooh, so this is the lights out moment mm -hmm. did we want so. to go into the office and Jake you have no problem as long as goes too far. just yeah do you want to have a look in there perhaps before yeah. we do that so before we head in there yeah. we'll just have a look in here because this is a quite a scary area as well so let's have a look you have to open it David can't open it <laughs> that's if it's locked locked it 
Maybe they'll stop you in there. Right. Maybe stop Dave I'm sure going. That. Was that, I'm sure that. Yeah. yeah, that was open earlier, I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was as well. Yeah, when we came to do the induction, I'm sure that that was... Oh, oh there you go. Oh, maybe they're trying to keep us out, David. <laughs> they're trying to keep us out, yeah. yeah Janet, Janet just says that she thinks they're trying to keep us out. <laughs> right, shall we venture up? Yeah, I'll just get my uh, torch on. <laughs> that scared everybody. That scared everyone. I've got my strobe light on, I need to get that on. <laughs> Spiders webs and webs. Right. Here we go. This is an old, abandoned and condemned. I think it's the electrical, electrical um, superintendent's office by looks of it with all the plans and drawings. So if you remember when they did Trampton, yes, you came in here. We came in here and had a look round. Yes, we did. So, uh, I think I we should. I think we should yeah. yeah. see it all there. Right? Damp and decay. How old is this building? Here uh, we are. 1930s, 31, 32, something of that era. So, getting on for 90 years old. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Go, folks, 90, if not so old. 1930s. Yes, early 30s. It all so, happened there. Yeah. Well, this was part of the um, massive investment in the tramway all the new trams all new buses new depot everything was swept away the old and they brought in all the new the balloons the rail coaches the boat cars and there was a similar fleet of buses whatever the trams had they had a similar bus so on open top single decker bus like the boat trams uh, double deck um open top a double deck closed top and uh, also a single deck uh, all with center entrances just like the balloon cars and the rail coaches uh, very unusual, very rare to have a bus with an uh, entrance in the middle, but Blackpool uh, invested heavily in a local company called Burlingham, which later became Duple, all based here in Blackpool, so it kept uh, local uh, trade and, and business going by investing in the local economy. And that so, was in the uh, early 30s. Somebody called Mark says, a lick of paint and it'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can on it. We can on it, it'll be right. It's not volunteering. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need paint brush. Yeah. Shall, we, shall we stay silent for a minute yeah, to see absolutely. if we can hear anything? Yeah, we've got to go silent for a second to see if we can hear anything. Right, so we're going Janet, Janet says she felt some pressure just down these stairs. I'm going to go to it where it was. She's going to go stand where yeah, it was. Yeah, that's the here. Thing. This is the second yeah. bit of pressure. Yeah. Be careful, eh? Yeah. Oh, right, Richard. And this corner. The first one was here. It's okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so you can feel it here. Just got, seem to be feeling, as you face the wall, I find it more. I think you're picking something up. This is where I felt it the most here and just there. I don't know if you can sense it the same. Let me stand down here see if I can feel anything. I'll just bob down a little bit. Just in case there's a pressure. And I thought just push it out. Janet said she could feel some pressure when she was stood here on her chest. I've got a bit of anxiety there because I'm thinking about it, but mm -hmm. I can't feel anything. 
If you turn around and face the wall, do you feel anything else? If you turn around and face that way, that's how I felt in that position. I've got to face the wall and see if I can feel anything. Yeah. I can feel like an anxiety rush from my chest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll try it, Steve. See if you can. And, and where Dad is now in that yeah. corner as well. See if you can feel anything wall. in the corner, do, uh, Steve. <laughs> So it's a bit, um, see the trams are coming, look, yeah. moving around, tram coming back from the illumination tour. <coughs> Do you feel it on your chest, you say? Yes, it's always like here. Sometimes the smell, sometimes the sense, and then sometimes it's like the pressure, and that was the sorts of pressure. The main one is through there when we go through there. Oh, so that's the, the dark bit in there. So I think when we get in, we're going to turn the lights off and then... Yeah. Okay. So let's head into the, I don't want to call it the dark room, what's it, the electrical, electrical compound? compound yeah. <laughs> Where they do all the electrical uh, pantographs, trolley poles, anything to do with the power supply to the trams is repaired in here. So anything for the power supply for the trams through there? Yeah. But we're not, I'm not going to call it the dark room because people might get the wrong idea. <laughs> we'll just put the strobe light on. Yeah. Epileptic warning. <laughs> right, so this, like David said, is the electrical compound. So there's a lot of trams in here getting worked on. But we are going to turn the lights off shortly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And see if we can see or hear anything. And we're going to have a wander around as well. Something I didn't think of till tonight, actually, is that, of course, I go off of a theory called stone tape theory as to what ghosts probably are, or most of them, which is how they can be picked up in the atmosphere. And look it up sometime. It's far too complicated to go into really in any any depth at the moment. But one thing I didn't think of till tonight is part of that is on on about electrical power, electrical energy within the force fields of the Earth, you know, North and South Pole, magnetic core of the Earth, blah blah blah. And of course, the whole point of this place is electric electricity. The tramway, everything to do with it, is powered by electricity. So perhaps there is some sort of I don't know, I'm not saying gateway exactly, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, I am the most sceptical person there is about this. I, it has to be scientifically proven for me to go, yes, there it is. Um, which is why stone tape is one of the more, uh, to me, accepted theories of what ghosts are. The basics are that the, the, the theory, and it is a theory, is that the atmosphere can pick up um, or record um, under certain conditions we don't yet understand, sights, sounds and smells. Uh, which is why, in theory, is why you see a ghost, it walks through a wall. If you find that the tape was made in 1860, that wasn't a wall back then, it was a door. And as it's only an image that's somehow been trapped on the atmosphere through the same sort of idea of, of videotape, because ferric oxide is in the atmosphere, which is what videotape basically is. So every constituent part of videotape is available in the atmosphere. Ferric oxide, magnetic field, north and south pole, ions in the atmosphere that make lightning, etc, etc. All the parts of making a videotape can be a sort of a, a, attuned to what's in the atmosphere now. So is it impossible for somehow things to get taped and then repeated under certain atmospheric conditions? We don't know. It's an interesting theory, that's all it is. But, as I say, it may have links to the fact that this place is literally here for electrical power, and that's linked to the, the stone tape theory. I'm not saying it's true, I'm just saying it's an interesting hypothesis as to what they might, might be. Yeah. So, what do you think, folks? That's, I think that that is plausible. That's David's theory on ghosts, which, to me, is probably the most plausible thing if you're a sceptic, because it's... It's kind of scientific in a way. Yeah, it's based in science. Yeah, it's based on science, which I am a science man. So it's based in, on science in like a videotape, which would make more sense. I'm more likely to believe that than, than like supernatural. You, know, you, just, you just don't know, do you? Um, I'm always open to anything. I never diss anything. Yeah, same here. Um, I'm always open to any kind of theory or idea. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I'm hoping one day I see one. You never know. It might be tonight. It's, to me, it's the most sensible suggestion as to what they might be. Yeah. It's certainly more sensible to me than Auntie Mabel doesn't like what colour coffin you've given so she's come back to go boo. I don't get that. That doesn't work. But the fact that... Um, I know that's a bit of a silly one, but you know what I mean. Um, but it's just that it has more scientific basis to me 
uh, as somebody who's very sceptical and needs things proving before the face sort of thing, than, than as I say, what most people think. Doesn't explain all. When anyone has an actual physical experience, like something hits them or whatever, that can't be stone tape. I'm the first to admit it doesn't solve everything. But I say 90 or 95% of what people see is the same thing happening time and time again. Ghosts going through that wall or up those stairs that aren't there anymore or whatever. So it's the same, it's a trapped, you know, video that somehow got trapped on the atmosphere and under certain conditions gets repeated a year later, ten years later, a thousand years later. So Pamela, Pamela says part of the name of stone tape comes from the old mortar in buildings mm -hmm. containing silica absorbing yeah. like a tape. Okay. Love reading up on stone tape, so... Fair enough, yeah, yeah, good idea, yeah. There's, there's a basis to it, I think. But I'm not saying you should believe it, I'm just saying it's worthy of perhaps more investigation. Brilliant. So, here's the electrical compound, like I said, some trams in here. You feeling anything in here, Janet? Uh, well, when I came on a tour, which David I think, did, didn't you? Yes, yeah, you, he ran well, the tour. Um, we were walking around here, and I, I was instantly drawn into that corner, yeah. which I still am now, so I've got the pressure again right now. And I think there's some steps. This is a while, it's a couple of years ago. Oh, yes, it's maybe a few three years ago. We've had COVID yeah, since then. Yeah, quite a few years. Yeah. So we go down there, and you, mm. there's definitely been yeah. a death over there. Without a shadow of a doubt. Well, this also is the substation. Mm -hmm. If anyone's going, if any if yeah. power is going to come in, do any harm yeah. to anyone, it's going to be in there. So we're going to head down to that we're corner, aren't we? We'll if you go on one four seven, I'll turn all these lights off. So you okay. Because we've got yeah. a story down there as well, haven't we? Yeah, we, we have. Yeah, well, a couple and, uh, of stories now. We'll head up. We'll head up, we'll head up the flying. stairs as well. Yes. Yeah, we need to go yeah, upstairs. Yeah. Let's make our way down. <clears throat> So we're heading down towards an old foreman's office down here again and there's a staircase that leads up to it. So we're going to head up there and stand at the top and look across the room. And uh, got one of the old Blackpool Corporation trams there. Look. We are going to go have a look in there I think later. So we're going to head up these stairs and uh, David's got a story for us. And also, I'll see if we can pick anything up while we're up there. Just coming through there, where the fellas are there, um, there was like a cobweb effect on my face. That was like a plasma. I could feel like, it's like um, in spiritualistic terms, we call it like somebody comes really close to us. That was just as we were walking down there. So These are tonight. the steps. We were drawn to in that tour. Are we going to go up the steps, folks? I hope so. <laughs> Let's go up, shall we? I'll just turn the camera around so you can see me. So, so we're heading up these stairs. I've got to watch where I'm going, so I'm going to keep my eyes down. And then we'll stand at the end across the depot and uh, have a listen. There's a wooden platform in front of me. Let's turn the camera around so you can see. So at the end of the stairs now. see one of the old trams down there look the old uh, open top I think it's called a boat tram that George Formby on the top there some of the deep pits down there as well that's what we're trying not to fall down hence why we put the cones over there so we don't want to be falling down these pits it's quite heavy on here do you feel um, like you're trying to catch your breath hmm for me, it's quite a heavy atmosphere, like I'm being, like, it's like a cushion sensation. Yeah, so I feel like I'm struggling for breath. So Janet's struggling a little bit for breath up here. Um, and, um, yeah, it's fine, there's nothing affecting us, you know, there's plenty of room space, we're not constricted by any room. But it's heavy here and here is where they were, on the screen. Yeah, that, that noise was me, sorry for my here is definitely something, and when we came on this tour, I'm absolutely convinced that somebody has died here, if not in that room. I was quite shaky the very first time, I couldn't breathe, I was struggling to get up the steps, and just around here is, it's not as strong tonight as the cold spot. This was it at the time. Um, There's some noise happening down there every few seconds. Where, sorry? Down here. Down here, we'll come back down. Yeah, well, you're all right there for a minute, because it's yeah. interesting you're up there. Yeah. Because one of the stories I tell 
and I'm doing the, the depot tour to sort of preempt our, our ghost tours next year. Is that one of the staff here, I won't name it, you know, embarrass mm -hmm. was up there exactly where you are mm -hmm. because this building here used to be a, a foreman's office, but it's now going to be the archive for the tram town where all the pictures and plans and valuable stuff is going to be kept in there. But over the years, it has become quite sort of derelict and the windows were broken. And one day, one of the guys was asked to repair the glass, and he was up literally where you're stood now. Mm. We're putting the glass back in. Um, to make it watertight for the And um, he had noticed that one of the trams here at the time was one called Mark Box 31. It's an open top double decker that usually lives at Beamish up in the northeast. But we, as part of the agreement of giving it to them, we can have it back when we want it for a celebration or a special day or whatever. And it was back here, literally where this floodplain is now, which is, by the way, the one for 704 that we mentioned in the fitting in the body shop before. This is the new chassis that will go under that body, and the old chassis will go away by the to be refurbished or scrapped or whatever. <laughs> but this is a replacement that's been built here in the workshop. Anyway, Martin Box 31 is sat here. Uh, quite happily, no problem. He's fixing just behind you on those windows. And he looks down, and the whole top deck is full of Edwardian dressed people, top hats and crinolines and the full scheme. Now, that's not massively uh, an unusual thing here, because of course, having the old trams, they're quite often used for filming, for say, I don't know, Downton Abbey or something, where you want to make something look like the 20s or whatever. And so he didn't think much of it. What he did think much of is that if you look back a couple of seconds later, and it's all gone. And there's no way they could have emptied that tram with 30 or 40 people on the top deck in the so If you didn't quite hear that from David, so at that point, I was saying there was a guy who used to work in this office here behind me. He was repairing a piece of glass in the window and he turned round and one of the trams that was parked up here at the time, so there's a tram parked just there where that chassis is, and he said uh, he saw a load of people dressed in Edwardian clothing or Victorian clothing stood on the top deck and uh, he said he sort of glanced away and then thought did I just see that and then glanced back and there was nobody there in the tram mm. so that was just here where we stood on this these steps here so this is a spot was it was it when we came on that tour three years ago yes. where yes. can you remember what else happened yeah yeah I, I don't get pleasant vibes here yeah. it's really not pleasant so Janet says she's not getting very pleasant no. vibes right here. No. I'm quite nauseous when I look over there as well. So she's not. My voice starts to go. So um, I think we should head down now because my voice is going. I don't want someone so to we come should, me yet. We should leave, she says. Go down the stairs. She's not liking it. I'm going to head down. Okay. I'm going to light your stairs up for you. Oh, thank you. And then I'll follow you down. And uh, I mean, I, I would say it's gone cold, but it's cold anyway. <laughs> So we're going to hear a recent story right here we'll as well. Silent bit first, if you wish that. Yeah, so we uh, <coughs> hover around here and turn the lights out. Yeah. You get Bob to turn the lights out. Yeah. yeah. We, Jamie says if we turn the lights off, we must stay static. So if the lights go off, I think Bob's going to turn the lights off for us. Yeah. Uh, we're going to stand right here because we shouldn't be wandering around, obviously, because there's deep pits and holes in the ground here so we can't be wandering around in the dark but there was definitely a sound in this area while you were up there quite, quite regularly not not every few seconds but quite regularly so we'll lean on this railing here yeah. and when he turns the lights off i'll turn my torch off yeah and then uh Do not to move as soon as the torch is off and we must hold that static. for us david yeah. just going to turn this light off <coughs> and then so the lights have just gone off, as you can see, so I'll turn this off and let's uh, have a listen.
is there? Janet says that there's something she's not happy about here. She's feeling something right here now. She's there. I think the noises are just water. We can hear some noises coming from over there. But we think it might be dripping water from the roof. Put the light on a little bit. So we can hear some dripping noises or something from over there. We're not 100% sure what it is. Even Jamie says he's very cold. Just a nice he, have you both gone really cold, he'd say? Yeah. Just right there. Let me join you. Yes, sure, join us, yeah. So apparently it's really cold here. Yes, just between us, you can feel it now. And it's up, it's coming up my leg. It's not good to be cheap now. It's really cold. Yes, it has truly it does feel cold here. Like a draft. It's quite cold here. Let's look into the roof. We can hear a lot of noises. I can hear a lot of noises over there. But again, it could be water from the ceiling. It's a water sound because it's a metallic eye. You know when you drop your hammer? Yeah. Or I get more of a pain than a drip of water. Yeah. There is water down there, look. And there's a leaky roof, so it could be that. The noises are different. We think we can, we can definitely hear some creaking as well, but again, there's a lot of objects here that try to expand with the heat and things. Heard it again there. Feel well. Something like on my throat. I feel tight. I was coughing before. So Jamie, Janet, and David have said that their throat feels really tight, a bit tense. David kind of dismissed it, but now these two have mentioned it. He's like, oh. Throats. Yeah. They're all feeling a bit of tightness. That's really strange because I'm not using him to that at all. Just in case anything's near yeah. you. Okay. Now, it depends oh. which train of thought you come from, whether you're spiritually speak, whatever, and what you believe in. Mm. That is holy water. Yeah. It's very spooky here. We can hear a lot of noises mm. out the back there. At the back of the building, there is hotels behind there, so it could be that. Mm, true. And uh, we're hearing a lot of noises in that corner there. In the it far could, corner? It could be outside. Yeah. yeah, it could be. Yeah. This is three or four years ago. Janet really didn't like that at all. She was not happy there at all. Stairs there. Yeah. They're the, uh, Up to the stairs, yeah. the spooky stairs. You say you've got all the power coming in just right behind this wall here, literally right behind us. Do you see anything in the windows, anybody? Yeah, some noises coming from the other room, but that's probably a tram coming in. Yeah. 
There are moving trams next door. So we can hear. Yeah, we can hear a tram coming in next door. Or it could be that train of Ghostbusters. Yes, it could, yeah. When they're in the tube tunnel, when they come in. So you can hear a tram coming in back there, which is next door. Anybody see anything in the tram? The tram's supposed to be quite spooky. This is the one that's named after Michael Ari from the uh, body shop I mentioned earlier. Because it came back from America and he, uh, he restored it or helped you know, his workers as well help restore it. Which had been sat for 40 years in America. They couldn't use it because they can't have double deckers over there. So just uh, trying to see if we can see anything moving on the yeah. tram. It's an amusing story. When they went to rescue it from America, yeah. uh, it had been at the back of this depot for 40 years because I say they didn't realise that the, the, the overhead is lower in America because they didn't ever had double-deckers. So it, the wire was touching the top of the tram all the time and it made it live, which isn't a good idea. Um, <laughs> so basically they couldn't use it. So for 40 years it sat at the back of this depot in American Museum, not usable. And in those 40 years, a family of raccoons decided it was their house. <laughs> and Michael Airy had the scratches and bites to prove it when they tried to get it back off them. Uh, it was quite a fight apparently. Raccoons are not the most amenable little creatures in the world. And so there is the story of Michael Airy and his couple of counterparts from Blackpool Transport when they went to rescue that from America, having to fight a, a family of raccoons to get their tram back. Yeah. So are we, are we going to... So walk further down? The yeah. Down, I'll, down to I'll put the spotlight on. <coughs> not that one. I'll put the spotlight on and we're going to go make our way down and we're going to go on the tram. We're going to go stand on the top deck of the tram, I think. So I'll follow you, David. Yeah. You want to go on one four seven? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go on the tram. We'll go on the top deck. See if we can hear anything. We're going to go stand on the. Well, tell me it's got something to chat about. And I felt that. Whoop. <laughs> yeah. So somebody has died, so it's right before. Is it somebody's died down there? I don't know, it's this one, but yes, definitely in a pit, which is what we felt before. Pick I've got a wet smell before. She's picking up that somebody's died down there, yeah. or in a pit, one of these pits here. And this, if he's not happy, of course, because he's not close to the other side properly, there'll be him here. That's what we may feel. Janet's picking up somebody's died down in one of these pits here. Well, that did happen. Uh, it was probably not this particular section necessarily. It may have been the other depot. In 1912, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Alexander Hollis. He was a worker here, and he did fall down a pit, and he died. And the council or corporation transport department felt a bit sort of sorry that it was on their watch. And so what they did was, because the trams used to go up Talbot Road as they were about to for next year, up to North Station, but they carried on further, and they went to Leighton. If you go to Leighton, um, where the road sort of diverges in Leighton Centre, there's a tram shelter there. It's more toilets and a, and a clock tower now, but that was the shelter to wait for the next tram because they went to the cemetery. And so until the 30s, the trams went to the Leighton Cemetery. They were going to go all the way to Leighton Station or what was Bispam Station back then, but they never got extended. But they certainly went to the cemetery. And so as a sort of mark of respect for their worker, Alexander Hollis, the corporation uh, put a tram on, which they took the side windows out. If you can imagine the side windows of that one being taken out, for example, 
and to allow the coffin to go in and another tram behind for the uh, for the mourners like the widow and the children etc and they took the body in the tram to the cemetery and as far as we know and somebody could argue this but as far as we know it is the only example in the britain there were other places around the world that actually had funeral trams and they were built for that purpose in mainly south america for some strange reason uh, but certainly in britain it's the only example we know of of a tram being used as a hearse and that happened in blackpool in 1912 when somebody did fall down a pit called alexander hollis and Blackpool Transport recently restored the, the headstone, which is a very nice gesture. And it's in Leighton Cemetery, you can go and visit it. One for you there, Steve. Leighton Cemetery. Mm. That's one for me, yeah. Yeah, it's dead interesting in there. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, we're going to make our way now. <laughs> I'll put my light on so everyone can see. And then uh, I'll put it up here. So we're going to head up to the tram and we're going to go up the top deck of the tram. And see if we can uh, hear anything up there. We'll, we'll keep the lights off and then we'll switch them off in there and we'll sit down and have a listen. And we might go on another tram in the depot outside as well. Because you can get a good view of the depot from around there. So we'll head into another tram as well outside and uh, get a good view around the depot. Got a few old railway sleepers down here, look. Of that one. There you go. Leighton. So it's labelled up or bannered up as Leighton. Used to go up to the cemetery. Up to the cemetery. So we're going to head on this old tram 147. Oh, yes. Is this the one that we thought yes. yeah. Yeah. That seat? So a few people on the live stream said that they thought they saw something up there. Up in the top deck. Right? So I think we should go up to the top deck. Watch the steps. And then. We'll take our time, we'll get upstairs, and then we'll have a seat upstairs. And uh, just have a look in here while we're here. So it is a very old tram, like you say. 1927, something like that. There you go, 1927. Well, certainly 20s. Definitely the 1920s, he says. So we're trying to walk up this spiral staircase with a torch in a hand and a camera in the other. You can see the old wooden up here so this is where a lot of you said you saw something something so i'm going to sit at the back here and then i'm going to turn the lights off when everybody gets up here so janet's asked jamie to sit with her because Last time they were together, they felt something. Yeah. <laughs> that was you, not me. <laughs> uh, Steve, Steve's here now. Steve's here. So, so we've got a wobbly tram, but that's the suspension. Right, so we're all going to sit, turn the lights off, and then see if we can hear or see. And the lights are going to go off, folks. Quiet. Yeah. And I watch oh, Touch okay. the Window and he does. <coughs> but they're restrained. 
So Jamie, Jamie and Janet. Jamie and Janet. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie and Janet. The double J. The two J's. It's like Janet and John, isn't it? <laughs> Jamie and Janet said the. You felt a bit of pressure on the head, like a headache. Seven car folks, and the roller lights turned out. And I feel like I'm feeling something. Did you feel anything? I've got my eyes. I've got my eyes closed. I just felt something going in front of my face, but um, an arm length away. I felt it. Something. It wasn't us, me. I felt like the tram was rocking. Yeah, yeah, I felt like we were at sea. Yeah. Steve, I've seen before. I mean, yeah. it has a suspension bit. And we're all completely still, aren't we? Stephen said he felt like the tram was moving, and I felt it as well. It's like it was rocking we're slightly. We're purposely still, aren't we? Yeah. To make sure that doesn't happen. I hate to suggest this, Janet, but is there any way you could summon anything? Perhaps? <laughs> you mean the old classic? Is anybody, anybody there? Well, not quite, but I'm not OK, let's do a unison watch, watch, of, is watch, anybody there? Watch too many movies, don't <laughs> Are you ready? Should we try it? Is okay. anybody there? OK, after three. One, okay. two, three. Is, is there anybody, anybody there? there? Oh, did you hear the echo? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never noticed that before. It's a big empty building, yeah. What's that? What's that knocking then? OK, let's try it then. If anybody's there and they want to communicate with us, Please do knock or make a sound once for yes and two for no. <gasps> was that you? No. What? Oh. what? That was that my... You definitely heard that. <laughs> my... That was two bangs, wasn't it? Did you hear that now? I heard it. I heard it. David, it was you. No. Oh. <laughs> It felt like my, my fingers are on, on sat on my hand. It felt like he was over here and then it went now. Bob. <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> it was behind David. It wasn't like it was David. It was yeah, like behind me. Yeah. I okay, felt it okay, behind me. So there's a knocking sound. I think me and Jamie should wander down that way. I think you're right. Right, me and Jamie should wander that way. Yeah. Um, I, I can't get the torch. I'm going to go down. Here's the safety person that I can repay. It's kindly pointed out and noted, yes. Do you want me to get you some light so you can see? Yeah. Have you got us? Right. We can turn the lights out again. Yeah. So I felt something stood there, but I don't feel as um, Ooh, was affected or affected right as over there. But I just feel Definitely something here. We both box. felt it there. We've got the urge to go towards back. the back. Is this the back? Too? I felt it. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Is this well, the back? well, the, the, the omnidirectional. Oh, you can. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's why the seats can move backwards and forwards. Well, we're going to come here. I suggest we don't come this way. Yeah. That's it's one of these oh, three windows. It's definitely not down there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you move I'm the chair? I to move the seat. Oh, that's all right. Jamie and Janet are going to stand in there. And it sounded like we're going to turn our lights off now. So we're going to turn the lights off again and see if we can hear anything. I'm quite unfolding my arms now. I'm not going anywhere near anything. I sat in the back room in the dark holding hands with other man. It's getting better this night, isn't it, Jamie? Right, should, should we try again? Yep. Please. Is anybody here? Knock once for yes, twice for no. Of creaking. Mm. Well, we try a unison like we did last time. Yeah, okay. Is there anybody there? there? That was a knock. It was. It was a yes. I'm just going to say please do yes, okay? Um, thank you for coming through to us. Okay, I'm not sure how you want to communicate to us or with us, but thank you. Please, could you do one knock for yes again? Or a sound for yes? Lots of creeps hanging here. Can hear lots of noises.
So is anyone here? Please make a noise. Outside. Yeah, to be fair. Oh, I feel warm here. Yeah. We both feel very warm here, like I'm on fire. Do you feel nice? Yeah. What was that? I heard something there. Yeah, I yeah, heard something. There's a big bang down there near the wall. Down the hill. Well, that the it's downstairs. It's big bang outside, just next to the tram yeah. here. But there's nobody there. There's another knock when she said yeah. no. There was a knock straight away. Can you make your presence known any clearer to us, please? Is anyone here? Please make a noise. That was loud. What was that? That, that was in front of you, Stephen. I actually felt that. I felt it. Wow. That was like the woodwork, wasn't it? That was very loud. That was right in the centre of the tram at the other side. Oh god, we've got one four seven haunted now. <laughs> and we're all Are you a kind presence? Please do once for yes or two for no. Are you a meanable presence for us? Yes, that was Did you hear that thud then? Yeah. Yeah. We felt it again. A friendly ghost, so to speak. Oh dragon. Yeah, I can feel it. Oh, good one. I can feel it. I know it's in the morning. Yeah, should we ask God to give you news again? I can feel it. Is he an was he a former employee? I have to say one, two, three. Were was you a former, former employee? employee? That was a yes. Oh. That was a yes. That was a thud on the bottom of the trap. I'm going to have to yeah, ask. Yeah, it's all downstairs, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to have to ask, is he the guy that was in the pit? Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it might have been. Okay, should we do it in you? Because if, if we're doing it spiritual space, the more positive energy you have, the mm. easier it is for them to communicate to us. So we'll yeah. ask, was he the chap who died in a trumpet after yeah. three? You ready? One, two, three. Are you, you the chap who died, died in, in the trumpet? Didn't hear anything that time. Didn't hear anything then. No. no. Hi. No, not that you know of. Hi, Paul and Diane. Bartley Green. Doing anything? Yeah. Hear some fireworks last time. Yeah. Oh, no, no. You need to um, say the question a different way then. Okay, how about did. Oh. God. Okay, he's right. I've got felt that then. A different yeah. way because he said yes. How about did he. Was he an engineer? Yeah, and then did he pass away on the premises? Mm. So I'll ask first, was he an engineer and did he pass on the premises? We'll do that separately. Oh, what's that? That was two. That was two, yeah. that was, no, that was two. Wasn't. Well, I need to ask them separately. He wasn't so doing Janet just said, were you an engineer and did you die on the premises? And there was two big thuds. And it was a no because that he wasn't, he was an inspector. Oh, right. I didn't tell you that. Oh, you didn't tell you no, didn't tell I that. just said, I work at... Okay. I I said, how, no, we didn't know that. Okay. So didn't I knew that, that's true, but no one else did. Me and Steve are... Yeah. Were you an inspector? Oh, what was that? Oh my goodness. That was, again, that, that was... Nice. Look how sure the other thought my bones were moving. You know, like... What is that? So that was right in the centre of the tram again. There is... Is it downstairs? All six of us are up here. Downstairs. The noise isn't close, close. Like, I think down there. They're not just here. The salt is close. It could be down the bottom up here. Yeah, it could be, yeah. I can see the shadow down these steps. I don't know if it's... My eyes are what. That was tapping, then, do you know? And again... 
Yeah. And I've just said, um, we are feeling. I feel like we should be up here, even if we may be downstairs. Yeah. I feel like we need to be up here. Fair enough. Does anybody else feel that? Is anybody else getting sensations? I've yeah. still got this thing in my throat now, even now. So we keep. So when Janet asks a question, mm. we can hear bangs, but they're, they're at the side of me and Steve. I mean, Stephen yeah. down here yeah. on the side of the tram, but there's all six of us are up here. Yeah. Should, we ask, should, we ask, should we go downstairs? Should yeah. we press that one and use yeah. again? Would you like to come us to go downstairs? downstairs? Oh. That was a thud. Oh. 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 No. We can hear it. Actually, you presumed he's a man. Well, yeah, well, if it's the one that fell down the pit, yes. Alexander Hollis was a was a man, yeah. But did, did we ask that? Uh, we didn't just ask no. That was a no now. It's not him. Yeah. Hmm? This is not him. Right. Oh, it isn't him, right. Oh, Fair enough. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. 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 Person that you literally thought we had that was me tapping the window, sorry. Yeah. Over there, three or four years ago, maybe she asked if it's that person. Yeah, yeah, it might be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Doesn't count to work that. Yeah. Okay, are you the spirit mm. that we felt three or four years ago on the top of the stairs in the landing? Mm. Is everybody happy with that? Yeah. Okay, you ready? For three? One, Bye. two, three. Are you, are you the, the spirit, spirit that we felt three, three, three years ago? Three or four years ago, on the at the top, top of those stairs. stairs. Oh, oh, definitely heard that. Oh, definitely. oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go home now. Mummy, I want my mummy. Thanks very much, Mark, for that. Me and Steve can definitely hear that. It is right. Well, I think we are moving away, but yeah. Can you hear that? We've got this. Like the sound of a tram going along the prom yeah. in our heads, like the actual mm, yeah. sleeping has been the wheels. Electric motors and all that, yeah. yeah. I don't know where we're going. No. Not no, I, hopefully nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's a tram in front of us, isn't there? <laughs> so we're currently on the oh, did, you feel, oh, did you feel it go then? It is moving, that. Yeah. Is yeah. the moving? Yeah. I said that, didn't I? The tram, I thought I could hear well, yeah. well, the tram, the tram, the same second you did, yeah. The, tram. the tram's rocking. Yeah. Yeah. And we are very, very still on third. The tram, the tram is rocking side to side slightly. This is the 147 tram. It'll yeah. be just on playback if you see any orbs or any lights going through. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Oh, yes. We should get, should we put a bit of light on just so we can see? Yeah, yeah. When I was in um, Fellas, when I was in, uh, I was a weekend away a couple of weekends ago, I've got all some flashing lights on my phone from a place that I felt really haunted. So why don't I just try and do it now, a couple of seconds? Mm. Is that good for you? Yeah, yeah. Right, grab me. Okay. Push, okay. Right, so I'm going to film. We have light. That's just fine work, isn't it? So what are you doing, Janet? I'm going to film. I was in a haunted house a couple of weekends ago, and I've got flashlights and orbs on my on my phone. So I thought if I just did a pan around, is everybody on? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
See that then? Strike light? Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw that. So you can get all Ready? Knocking, and flashes of light. I'm going to get um, Steve's light in a minute on us. Oh, they are the top one then. You see them two in the right hand corner on my phone? I'll play back for you in a second. Wait a minute. Oh, see nope. that one there? Saw that, yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. Oh wow! I see the orbs going, going across the phone. I'm going to come round and just get you on my camera she's as well, just for a second. Because I'll oh. send you this if you like, and you can put it. <laughs> so she's filming me so she can pick any orbs up or anything. <laughs> oh, there's lights going past, and I realise we've got some action going on. Did you see those two go past then? Yep. And again. And oh, again. Wow. Yep. You can see them on a Janet's phone there. Look. Yeah, feel free. Can you see that? Oh, you can't see that. Do you want to stand behind me? Show, show Steve. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, right, it can be salt and dust. Yeah. But there's yeah. no cushion. Yeah. It's all wood. It's just yeah. There's nothing to hold on to. Does it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in here. And now I'm going to sit in here just for a minute and just see if we can hear anything in here. And then we'll move on around the depot and uh, have a little wander around and uh, make our way into the actual tram depot at the front. But we're just going to stay in here and do one more experiment in here. Just do a bit of a... see if we can get any noises. Because we were hearing the noise about there, upstairs. It sounded like it was coming from down here. <laughs> Epileptic thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Very strange. Can you feel the engine again? Can you hear it? Yeah, like that electric motor. Yeah, the motor. So we're going to sit down here. So we've got Bob next to me, Janet and Jamie. <laughs> David's up there and Steve's up there. This is the. The thing that they turn around to change the destination blind, yeah, stranger. It's a bit more It is comfy down here. It doesn't want me and you to take a picture, does it? Well, it's not letting me activate. Do you want to like call that? out again, Janet? Um, we were trying to take a picture, Jane and I, um, mm. you know, like a selfie, just yeah. to see the other in front. But I'm trying to turn it on and it won't come on. And then when I did, it went into some strange mode. mode. Yeah. Right. So I've got a feeling that we're not meant to take not a picture, so I'm not. Take pictures. <laughs> um, of me and Jamie, so Sense. something's reflective. Sense. Sense. Want to yeah, be seen. It is, it is now, yeah. It's very cold. It's very cold. It's freezing down here. Yeah. Yeah. I just wondered, you see, if it was going to pick up a shadow behind us or a face and it doesn't want us to. It's very strange how that mm. would not come on. Yeah. The interesting thing, when we were going beforehand, mm. Jamie said we had to go around and make sure we knew where everything was, which is good, which is a good idea. And there was another gentleman with us called Carl, and he went upstairs and he said, ooh, this is weird up here. No, I didn't think much of it at the time, but now we've been up there. Oh, you mean this? This one, oh, this particular track. Right. Yeah. We got to the top of the stairs and ooh, this is spooky. Yeah. He didn't go on the top deck per se, he just made sure everything was okay. But he, he did actually mm. say, this is spooky, this, it is weird. And then came back down again, so yeah. yeah. Do you want to call out, Janet, Let's see if we get anything? <clears throat> okay, should we do it in unison again? Yeah. We seem to have good luck at that, should we do yeah. what we did before, after three? Is anybody there? Okay? Because yeah. if you have laughter yeah. with it, it attracts the energy. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Is yeah. anybody there? there? Oh, please yeah. tap once for yes and two for no. That was a little tap yes, from upstairs tap, now. Yeah. Typical. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, I heard that. Oh, crap. <laughs> I mean, we are on a creaky wooden tram, yeah. but. Yeah. but it's strange it's, that when we're downstairs, yeah. it sounds like they're upstairs. Yeah. Now they sound like they're upstairs. We're going to be at the front bit, you know, where we saw all the mobs. Oh, and then we at saw the other stairs, me and David could smell something different. Yeah, just different. Right, did yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, the very top step. Yeah. But I wouldn't really want to stand there. Yeah. I didn't stay that long either. No. <laughs> the smell, it was very strong. Yeah. Yeah. My heart's racing smell. on the ground on the, on the, um, well, ground floor if here. If we go for the stone tape, it can also hold on to smells. I mean, oh, right, the amount okay. of times people yeah. have said Auntie Mabel's died or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and I've smelt a perfume yeah. a couple of weeks later, and things like that, that may, may, be stone tape that it can somehow oh, hold on to, yeah. hold on to that. And I, I agree, yeah, I think some things are stone tape, but as you not know, all of them. Not yeah. all of them. All so of them. if you smell yeah. things, as I do sometimes, that'd be yeah. like Claire Sanchez, yeah. you just have a whiff of something like I did by the pit. I, I, I could smell Floor, yeah. something floral. floral. Yeah, floral. And there's it's nothing floral, floral in yeah. here, is there? No, no I've just got it then. It's like a perfumey oil smell. Yeah. <laughs> I just got like yeah, like an oil, like a yeah. olive oil kind of yeah. smell. Yeah, yeah. That's strange. That was a strange noise. That was a strange noise, wasn't it? Is there anybody here? Not once for yes, twice for no. Keep hearing knocks, but in case they need us to, uh, we're linking in again, Jamie and I. Gosh, my heart is racing. I feel a bit quite shaky. Do you feel anything? Not really, not. No. I don't know if it's on before, because upstairs my shoulders went a bit tight. Mm. 
Like you've slept dodgy. Yes. And now it's sort of like still there. Still there, okay. Let's try again then. Is anybody there who'd like to communicate with us, please? Do you hear that? Someone don't know. Yeah. There's a signal, please. Me and Bob just felt something wind. behind us here. Okay, and there was a wind then. Did you hear that wind? Ooh. We felt something behind us in the the uh, driver's cab here. Both turned around at the same time. Yeah, we so both, me and Bob, have, we both got our backs to the driver's cab and we're at the end of the tram and we just felt something move down there. Like a bit of vibration. Okay. There? Is anybody in the driver's cab, please? Mm. Was that a yes then? Yeah. Um, are you the chap from upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> that was two taps and a... Yeah, I, mean, I think that noise was out front. So we're hearing noises from the tram depot as well. Yeah. Yeah. But the knocks are in here. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely the tram <laughs> depot. <laughs> I think somebody oh, fell off roof. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear them slamming doors out there. I was going to say, I've never heard it that clear in my life before. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need it over there, Jamie, mate. You're not going out there on your own, are you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> not the time, no. <laughs> He's seen it. <laughs> He'll have to get first aid himself. I think he was just shouting to him. Yeah. Like, he didn't quite have to shout. Let's try it one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Would hard. you prefer us to be upstairs to communicate? What that was two. That was two knocks. It was. Can we just double check, please? Is it two, one for yes and two for no? Can you show us again, please? That was one. Yes. It's coming from yes, me. I don't want to. Yes, it showed us again. I thought it was here. Yeah. It's coming from me. It's down the middle, down there. down there. I was like, that's weird. I can feel it sort of down there. Yeah. It is. Are you sat in the first seat? Which way is the first seat? Well, the yeah. Your Would you prefer us to sit back down again? Kind of a draft around my legs. Yeah, you don't want to sit down. You want to sit down? <clears throat> yeah, I feel a bit... Um... Like headed? <coughs> okay. Oh, the legs are like jelly, it's like being back at sea, like the tram's okay. moving. If anybody's mm -hmm. coming to Jamie, please wow. leave him now. That was one, did you hear that? that yeah, was yes. that was a tap. Yeah. 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 Okay, David's not used to being overshadowed, so please leave him alone. Right. I think we should move on, do you think? Should we, um, well, let's say thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank, you thank, thank you, everybody, thank for you. coming through to us. My legs are ice yeah. cold now. Thank, yeah, you for, yeah. thank you for your proof. We appreciate your help. Thank you. Mm. Please rest tonight. So me and Bob heard a noise out here, didn't we? Mm. We heard like a thud and like a like a movement as well, like a rumble here. I think we're going to head out now and just move on somewhere else. Maybe going to the depot. What is that in there? Oh, it's Stephen. <laughs> I thought it was more like the seas that like, it was moving. Yeah, yeah. Like very sort of like, unsteady on my feet. Yes. And I think the only way I can describe it is like being at sea. Yeah, yeah. Like, like a, like a, like a, you felt like yeah. you were back in the Navy, didn't yeah, you? I did. Oh, you're a sailorman. Yeah. Right. So okay. I felt like, like upstairs it was really bad. Yeah. And it wasn't like, it was like a, a calm sea. Yeah. It wasn't like it was really bad. But then downstairs then, where we were stood, yeah. it felt really bad, and it's like you want to sit down before you throw up. And mm. that's when that's we moved to that yeah. chair, which is where you thought you... Did you say you heard something or you saw something? Just, Just then, we, we, were, we heard something here. Here. We were sat with our backs, yeah. we yeah. were sat with our backs to it here. But there was something in front of you, Derek. There was something behind us there. We both turned around at the same time. Right. Like 
it's like a it's like a deep thud right okay and uh like a, a bounce yeah. just here it's like somebody had stepped on the trunk. Did anybody um, comment about that? Yeah, that the or anything? Did anybody see anything on the live stream? Did you see any uh, anything moving, any orbs, anything like that? Janet would mm. like to know. Thank you. Let us know. So I know a lot of you. Not to you guys. I know a lot of you. Uh, don't believe it all and are very skeptical. I mean, I'm very skeptical, but oh, yeah. we're here for the experience. Let's try it. You know, let's see what happens. Well, we've had experiences Hello. <laughs> try not to blind your camera. <laughs> no. Stephen's just behind us. <laughs> so we're going to head. We're going to. I think we're going to go into the main tram depot now and then. Because uh, the vibes are changing, I think we do need to leave. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to leave. You said you scared them then, Stephen. Scared the viewers. <laughs> you said they thought they saw a ghost until they saw you. <laughs> Whenever I do this dark video, I sometimes hold the light like that. <laughs> yeah, let's do the under the chin, shall we? Should we do the. <laughs> You, know, you don't want to look at me, you want to see what's going on, don't you? So we're heading out of the dark room, the lights have just come on. And we're now heading into the main tram shed. And we're, I think we're going to go on another tram in there. So, uh, let's turn it around. Hi David from Cardiff. Um, that one's named after Ray Roberts, who was a, a very nice bloke who lived here, uh, sorry, worked here and lived in Blackpool. Um, unfortunately, he died in a bad accident uh, a few years ago on his way to, to here. Um, mm. And he was uh, given the respect of a, of a name of a tram off him because off he was uh, one of the depot guys here. Um, unfortunately, his car caught fire, from what I gather, and it, because he was in his, his overalls, which were covered in oil, um, when he was trying to fight the fire, his overalls went up and it wasn't nice. Yes. Yeah, no, no, on the on the Eden Way, on the way in, broke down on the Eden Way, and the car caught fire. And that that's the story I heard. I, I apologise if it's slightly wrong, but that's what I heard. So, uh, yeah, it was an unusual one in the sense that it wasn't an accident in the normal sense of the word. Mm -hmm. He tried to fight the engine fire, and he, he was wearing those balls. David wanted to know what it'd be like with Francis Bourgeois. Promise a story Hello, I'm Francis Bourgeois. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I did promise a story from here that only happened on Friday when, I, uh, uh, when there was a tour being done here. Um, basically, um, one of the guides was called uh, Neil, um, and off to the tour, um, he was talking to one of the other guides about the story relating to the, the stop at the top of the stairs there with uh, the, the worker who uh, saw. But, um, Martin Box 31 and the people on board it as I said previously and he then said well that's strange because somebody was it in this area so they said yes it was in this area um, and this he asked basically somebody whispered quite loudly though in his ear the trams so much so that he went back to a guy who one of our other guides to ask him did you just say something to me and the guy was like no say a thing to you and he was a good few feet away and at the same time there was a guest one of the ladies uh, one of the, sorry one of the guides here had a, a guest lady called Elaine and she said well that's strange because I felt a really cold draft at exactly the same time that happened as if it had gone past him said that and then gone past her and he was quite a few feet away and that happened literally just, just on Friday I'm just getting a really cold draft on my ear as you said that but mm, I think yeah, it's because we're near we are a big we're deal. near the big door here for the tram depot but yeah. just as you said that fair. yes it does a really cold yeah. draft on my ear yeah but that happened literally just on Friday just sat where we were over there before in the uh, electrical compound. So somebody whispered the trams, the trams in his ear. That's all they said. And, 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 but really loud, well, not loudly, but really, you know, Prominent. prominently. Yeah. Still a whisper, but quite clear. Um, and then this lady felt the, the draft at exactly the same time as if something had gone right past her to him and said that. It did follow that that was the <laughs> pathway. So, you know, yeah. there we go. Brilliant. So shall fun. we go? Through there. Not seeing any more than that, but there see we go. what. Yeah. What do you want to do in there, David? Any ideas in there? 
Um, I can give you one more story um, that relates to the trams, not particularly in the depot, admittedly. Um, but there is one more, the Phantom Tram, that's supposed to happen. Um, this is up at the Claremont, uh, which is the stock sort of past into North Shore area, past the, uh, the Metropole, if you know that area. Um, what happens usually in the, in the winter, um, and you'll see why it's winter normally in a minute, with the stories that happen. People will be waiting at the Claremont stop, uh, tram stop, which is still there, um, and the tram will, well, the tram will, you'll feel the tram go past, you'll hear it go past, you'll even see the water getting pushed out of the tracks if it's rained recently, because they do fill up in the channel, as you can see like that down here. That would fill up with water quite easily if it's been raining. The water will be seen to be being pushed out by sort of wheels, and yet no physical tram goes past. You can hear it, you can feel it, and, but you can't see it, and even as I say, the water gets pushed out. People will then ring up the depot, complaining that the tram's gone past and left them, and then the driver will have, they'll have, just ask the inspector what driver number, what vehicle number, so they get the right driver for, for giving him a telling off. And of course, they can't give a number, because it doesn't physically exist. The thing isn't a tram, it just feels like a tram's gone past, and you can hear that this tram's gone past, but there's no number. Because mm. because there's nothing to see, and so the inspector will say, "Oh, are you up at the Claremont stop, sir?" And they'll go, "Yeah, how did you know that?" Oh, it's all right, so we know all about it. It happens quite regularly during the winter. Is that an excuse for when it blobs? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost tram. It's a ghost tram. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the phantom tram story. The phantom tram. Story. Combination tram. When, it, when, when it first came out, it was creepy. Yeah. yeah. And they sent it out at two o'clock in the morning on the prom. And uh, a drunk boy coming out at pub like, and spotted this tram going past. And he's used a green and green <laughs> and reported to the papers that a, a ghost tram had just gone past him. <laughs> it was so just... Walter Luft intervened and said, That's my new fleet of trams. What's going on? <laughs> <That's right, laughs> it's yeah, just a mistaken yeah. colour. That's a true yeah. story. Yeah. Got this old uh, balloon car here. We'll look inside. So uh, they're restoring this one slowly. Yeah, this is 726. This is the last one of the fleet. This is the last one that was built. Got a lot of... Uh... It's uh, going shortly. It's going to a new home to be restored. Yeah. So it is going to get restored, yes. this one? Yeah, it will, yeah. You can see if you look closely at the side of it. Oh, yeah, the, the yeah, Boeing. Bowed down, it's a bit of a banana, and that's what happened. The trams were built for 30, 40 years service maximum, if not slightly less. These are getting on for 90. Yeah. So they're certainly now showing their age. But so they've they... done far more work than they were ever expected to. So they're getting very old now, anyway. Yes, but, yeah. Um, we'll do one more thing. So we'll go on the tram over there, in the top one. 706? Yeah. Yeah, if James is happy with that. Probably wrap it up, I think. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. It's getting on two hours now. <laughs> yeah, 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 true. So we're going to head down, just have a look at some of these trams, but we're going to head down to 706 and try and get on the top of it. Because it's an open top tram. Oh, is it this one? You okay with that, Jamie? Going on 706, right? So we're going to go on to tram 706, which is the open top tram. You can get more view across the depot, you think. And then we'll try uh, get a view across the depot and uh, see if we can hear anything and try to do some shouting up there as well. Mm, yeah. See if we can hear any noises or anything in the depot, because yeah. this depot is huge. Is so uh, 100 and, is it 130 trams, David, it can hold? Yeah, certainly 100 and something, yeah. 100 and odd. Yeah, 110, 115, something You can see all the old trams here, look. Some of these are, well, they're all different generation trams, but yeah. some of them are really old, some of them are 1930s, 1920s. You'll recognise a lot of the illumination trams and things, Princess Alice here. Yeah. So we're going to head on Princess Alice six, yeah. and we're going to go. It says top deck closed. You <laughs> <laughs> the other one might not be. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's open. So let's head upstairs. See the old uh, boat, hover, tram. hover tram there, look. In the early 60s. So we're heading up now. It is covered in tarpaulin because they do have a leaky roof. So we'll head over this side, 
So this is one of the open top trams that you see in Blackpool going down the promenade. And we're going to shout out across the depot, so I'll turn my torch off because I don't think it's needed now. And uh, so here we are. You can see the whole tram depot here. Steve's still making his way down. We're going to stand up here and get some... Uh, See if we can hear any noises in the depot, but you can see all the trams go all the way back there, look. To the other side. All the way around. And right down the far side down there. Like I said before, this place has a very leaky roof. And it needs a brand new roof, the whole thing. So the whole point of today is to raise a bit of awareness as well. So if you can, there's a link in the description below. If you want to donate any money towards the roof, fix the roof please click that link below and send anything a pound two pound five pound whatever you want just to go towards the roof fund here because it does leak hence the tarpaulin on the front of the tram and also one more time if you want to do a tour around this depot through the day again go on the uh, tram town website just google tram town or tram town tours again i did that i don't know why i did that but google tram time tram town tours and uh, you can come here through the day. Again, it's really cheap, a couple of quid. You can do a full tour of the depot. I did it on a uh, video. And also, very soon, they're gonna be starting ghost tours right here. So again, keep your eyes peeled on the Tram Town website for the ghost tours that David's gonna do, or David's friend. <laughs> His alter ego, that is. So, uh, yeah. And a big thanks to everyone for joining us so far anyway. We've not finished yet, but we're not gonna go on too much longer. A big thanks to everyone for joining us. I, I'm sorry I've not had a chance to read a lot of your comments out because uh, there's so much going on. We're actually trying to do a ghost hunt, a genuine one. <laughs> so I've not been reading comments. I've been reading them, but I've not been shouting them out. And uh, I can see them on here. So Steve's... Is Steve on board? can't go forward. Who? I'm not coming forward at all. Hang on. So... So apparently Janet and Jamie can't go beyond this point here. And we're not, we're not feeling it. They're not feeling it. Why don't you just sit in the middle then? If yeah, it's, gonna go back to you're going to go back to the other side. So Stephen's sat over there. I might head down here a little bit. I'll come and join you both. <laughs> Enjoy you both. I have no idea how long my bath is going to last for. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I think we won't be much longer, I don't it think. It doesn't give me any no. sign on my phone how long my bath will last. I think it's good for about another half an hour, but uh, yeah, but we're currently on top of the. the um, and this is weird. That's where I want to go. So we'll do some shout outs, shall we, in a minute? When I push it to the front again, that's what we call that before we've got on. You've been all cold, Janet. Shaking. No, I'm not cold, no. I'm wrapped up, see? Shaking. Yeah, when we came on the tram before, I showed Jamie in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh,
bag, my bag's in the way, so. So we're gonna do some calling out in a minute. Mm -hmm. and okay, are you ready to do it now? Yeah, we're gonna do Three, some four, calling out. Three, one, two, three. Is anybody oh, there? Yeah. I don't feel like we're gonna get the sort of banging in the sounds no. that we got before. No. I, I don't think it's that sort of um, contact rate. You can hear a lot of dripping water over here, coming from the roof. It's different than before. It's very open, isn't it? Yeah. But it's open up front, isn't it? Okay, shall we try again? Let's try again. Is there anybody there? That was a big bang, but that was down there. Okay. Mm. Did you do it again? I've got a feeling they want to overshadow or generally come through, which uh, I'm not quite prepared to do. <laughs> uh, these have probably got um, a, a, a stronger energy. Are you alright, David, down there? Yeah, I'm fine. You okay, David, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You're enjoying his ride on the tram, aren't you? <laughs> This is more of a physical one because we've just flicked him. Just flicked my neck a few, few minutes ago. Mm. Something flicked like, your neck? Like somebody had just done that to my neck. Yeah, just once. And I thought it was water when I looked up, there's nothing. Should we shout out again, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, should we add something to it, like, um, what do we say last time? Uh -huh. Let's like communicate with us. Yeah. One, two, three. Hello, no, is anybody there? there? Would you like to communicate, communicate with us? us please. Please, can you make your presence known? Something you can see or feel? Not liking this one. Um, the very up, I feel the very upset. I like want to cry, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Hear a lot of noises, but You're getting some noises. There's people out the front because uh, it's a working yard, so there's people out the front, so we can hear them talking, and people in the distance on the promenade. Fireworks outside as well, so we're trying our best to listen for noises here, not outside. And again, there's dripping water right behind me here. You can hear the water dripping on top of the trams. Yeah. Mark says this sounds like there's some workers, there is. I feel like it's moving, do you feel it's going? No, but I feel sad and my shoulder's sore. It's sad. There is somebody very sad up here, they're not very happy. Janet says she's picked up somebody very sad, not happy, up here. Jamie feels sad and heavy shoulder, don't you? Yeah. She's picking up something sad. Do you feel anything? Do you feel anything? No. It's not more like it was, it's a different type of sensation. Yeah. Oh, shall I do that? Yeah, yeah do your orb camera again. Let's try that. Sure. Janet's going to get her orb camera out. Get my orbs out. Get your orbs out. <laughs> She's going to get her orbs out. There's a new one, isn't it? You said that one, not me. She said that, not me. I can say that. Before I get all the comments. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I'm just going to turn this round. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I think that's just uh, your camera. Could you take the gloves off? Yeah. Janet's got a robe camera out. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I'll flash past yeah. then. Yeah. I'll come past you in a second. Look at that balloon tram over there, look. 
It was just here, actually. It was just, uh, it was just here, and it went past. We can even see the rocket jump, folks. Can you see it over there? We can stay there, David. It's fine. The rocket trap. I'm looking right in front of you now. I've not seen much here, have we, compared oh, to the last just one? Just there. It's just there. Behind me. Right. That'd be me. Sorry, in front of me, between me and you. Can you see them then? Right. Do you want to put your camera behind mine? Yeah. Yeah. Front of you. I was just here with you on it then. I'll show you this video clip after, and then you can. Oh, there are those one past then. Do you see it? Yeah, I saw that. See that? See all them there? David, don't move. Can you see that? Don't move. Don't hold on, David. Hold on with both hands. Because they're flying up the stairs. Mm. They're coming up the staircase. Yeah, yeah, they are, because you're meant two or three more then. Mm. Don't move. I can see them on my camera as well. Yeah, good. I can see them here. Here? Yeah. Oh, they are. Big one went past then. I think that was just out of your shot, I think, then. When you just said it then. Something's to the side of me. Yeah. Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> okay. So all these orbs are coming up here. Yeah. Oh, that's your yeah. finger. I wonder what it was, didn't you? Yeah, that's my finger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's more men. You see it then? Shut, shut up. See that, yeah. I'm shaking. I'm going to switch it off now, okay? Yeah. <gasps> David, they're coming for you. <laughs> they're coming for you. <laughs> going to take oh, me away. I'm going to take you back to the mental hospital. <laughs> Anyway, I think we're just going to make our way up to the front and we'll say a few thank yous and we'll just have a quick look round some of the trams and then we'll make our way down. That was more eventful than I yeah. I'll admit that. <laughs> that. I think the tram, the uh, the old one in there, what was it? 147. 147. Standard, yeah, standard I think that was strange, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can see the water leaking here. Yeah. Can you see the water? Yeah, that's water, yeah. We need, a new route. we need to go this way, don't we? <laughs> so we're going to make our way off the tram and then we're heading. Just, we'll have a look in a couple more quickly and then we'll make our way out the front. Say a few thank yous and uh, see if we catch anything on the way out. Yeah, big thank you again to Samantha for doing my uh, moderating my chat for me. So thanks to Samantha for moderating the chat. She's been on it all night. I don't think she expected to be on it for two hours. <laughs> yeah, you may recognise this tram here. The Illuminations tram. Yeah, you're going to get some fresh air. So yeah, you remember the boat tram here? I'm just going to watch these pits here, look. There's all these pits down here. We've got to be careful because they're right behind us, look. We've got to watch where we're standing. We've got the boat tram there, look. This tram, you may recognise it, is the illumination tram. The um, the train, I forgot what they call it, Santa Fe. Probably the most famous tram in Blackpool. Yeah, this is definitely the most famous tram. The one that looks like a big train going down the promenade. Well, it's been out working all night on the promenade for the illuminations, but it's come back a couple of, well, probably an hour ago. It's finished now. The illuminations are still on mine, but it's finished for the day. And it's back, having a rest, ready for tomorrow, when it's back out again. It's been quite a long flight to admit we've been going over two hours now. Just through past the control deck of the Great Western Santa Fe. So you definitely have seen that many times on the promenade. We've just got to be careful of these pits here as we're walking out. You can see all the uh, trams packed up here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly. I'm not going just yet, but I'm just saying, I hope you enjoyed this slightly different live stream i just wanted to try something completely different now for all those people in the chat saying this is not a ghost hunt 
you're not using EV meters and you're not using this and you're not using that and you don't have any of this and you don't. It's my first time I've ever done this and I'm not a ghost hunter. We literally just thought we'd do it for Halloween. So we've got access to the tram, tram town and we thought, you know what? Let's go on Halloween and do the ghost tours and we'll do the ghost stories and have a look round. Just, I don't know, just see what there is. I'm not here to do any experiments. We're just here to listen and wander around. It was mainly for the ghost stories and the experience. I'm not a ghost hunter, so if you're expecting that, then you're going to be disappointed because I ain't. But you know what I do, it's history. And um, But we were literally here just to have a go. And Stephen's doing the same for Walk on the Wild Side. So he's he's doing the same as me. We've come for the experience. Sorry, I'm too busy yeah, chatting away. Amazing, yeah. What an this? amazing night we've had here at, at uh, Tram Town. And, and great to do the video with Darren here. Absolutely amazing. It's been an awesome experience. And I hope everyone enjoys the live streams mine and uh, Darren's it's uh, been and, uh, really subscribe to walk on the wild side and subscribe to adventure me and like the videos as well <laughs> but it's gone on a bit longer than we thought hasn't it Stephen? <laughs> yeah so a bit longer but yeah, i didn't yeah, put a time so it on has it has been yeah. a really amazing night interesting what, isn't my it? back is killing me now <laughs> <laughs> i'll be glad to get home and sit down but <laughs> thanks to everyone we've still got over 500 people watching it's been oh, wow. a long Night here at Tramsam, but uh, yeah, five hundred. Looking back on this, it's been so <laughs> different, though, hasn't it? Yeah, mm. it's been it's been different. It's certainly been different. So mm. don't forget, folks, if you come to Blackpool, give this place a visit because mm. it's absolutely amazing. There you go. Mm. I'll just turn you around and show you the so Bolton car there. Look, Bolton the 66. Here, yeah. Another old tram there. Yeah. Oh, they're all old. <laughs> Well, when that was found, it looked just like the ones you saw in the body shop, you know, just the lower deck with the yeah. little sort of garden shed. That's all there was of that when it first it was, appeared. It was actually no, two it's of them. There was 81 and 66, mm. and it was a choice between... It's an old Bolton tram, that. Because it had more on it. Yes, it did, yeah. Yeah, I just thought we'd try something different, because we always... I always get asked to do something on Halloween, and I never know what to do, because I'm a history channel, really. And uh, I thought, when we came to Tram Town in summer, they, they said, why don't you come and cover our ghost tours? And I thought, what a brilliant idea. I'll do it for Halloween. Have to Are you going, me. Janet? Yes. So, I'll just turn you around, everybody. Say a big thank you to Janet for joining us this evening. Thank you. And, and thank I've you been our, our uh, sensitive guide this yes. evening. I'll do it again, again soon. So, a big thank you. We need to be covered from the we need, we need a different venue, don't we? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we know a few. A big thanks to thank Janet you. for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. Also, a big thank you to Jamie for, for making sure we don't die, yeah. fall down any holes or any. I'm Bob for taking it, taking up the behind. <laughs> That's you, you were always behind me. <laughs> big thanks to Bob, and also a big thank you to a friend of the channel. You know him; he's been on plenty of our videos. Thank you. Winter Gardens. Uh, Rakes Hall. You weren't in the Rakes Hall no, one, but you no, were there. You were there. Yeah. And also Blackpool Central and yeah. here at Tram Town. Yeah. So a big thanks to David for joining us once again. And here's your yeah. ghostly tour guide as well yeah, if you come to Tram Town. And uh, it's been absolutely brilliant tonight. Yeah, it's been amazing. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Like I said, it's been very different, hasn't it? Well, I'm glad that uh, I've made it right there. Eh? So big thanks to everybody for joining us. And again, big thanks to Stephen from Walk on the Wild Side for coming along as well. So I had this planned in since summertime and uh, I didn't want to do it on my own because I felt like there was a lot of people just for me. So because Stephen's a fellow, uh, I say fellow because I'm not from Blackpool, but because Stephen's a, a Blackpool YouTuber, I thought who better to ask than Stephen? And I watch Stephen Walk on the Wild Side. I watch him. I have done for many years and uh, I love his videos, so I thought, I'm going to message him, it's not going to hurt, and see if he's interested in doing a Halloween video. And he said yes, and here he is. So I'm glad he got something out of it as well. But I've really enjoyed... Okay, some music coming down there. The illuminations are still on, by the way. But I'm literally going to wrap it up now here at Tram Town, and then I'm going to head back to Leeds, because I need to get home. It's absolutely freezing outside now, I'm shivering. <laughs> you can see the camera moving, I'm shivering. It's not necessarily all the weather, are they? No, <laughs> yeah. I'm shivering for the wrong reasons. Yeah. 
But anyway, a big thanks to everyone for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer live stream. I say that, I do long ones anyway. But a big thanks for joining us. And we'll try to do stuff like this again in future and a bit different. You know, different live streams and different places. Yeah. Maybe next year we'll do one in Leeds, maybe. I don't know. We'll mm -hmm. see. I'm going to try and think of a, a better venue in Leeds that we can do it at. But uh, thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, a big thanks to Stephen from Walking the Wild Side and all the guys here at Tramtown. And also, not forgetting, Paul Galley, mm. Councillor Paul Galley, who is... Is he the chairman, David? Yes. He's the chairman of, the, of Tramtown. Something like that. So he basically runs and he's responsible for getting the funding for this place and making sure it, it, the trams get fixed, basically. So a big thanks to Paul, Councillor Paul Galley for allowing us to come down to Tramtown and, uh, you know, and do a ghost hunt, which they've never done before. And, uh, yeah, a big thanks to Paul and all the team here at Tramtown for looking after us. And Blackpool Transport as well. Obviously, not forget them. Anyone else? Big plans for Trump Town that were uh, being revealed shortly. You'll get uh, get first shout on them at some point, I'm sure. So that should be interesting. They're going to have some work done. There's well. some pretty impressive plans. Trust me. Brilliant. So there's some good projects coming up here at Tram Town, which yeah. we'll, we might be involved with later on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, big thanks to David once again. You're welcome. And uh, I think we're going to end it here. But thanks for all your, your donations and everything. If you've done any donations below. Again, in the description below, if you want to donate anything to Tram Town. And to sort of paraphrase some other organisation that does similar, don't have nightmares. <laughs> Do sleep well, don't have nightmares. <laughs> Happy Halloween for tomorrow. The only reason we did it today and not tomorrow was just in case the live stream died. And then I would have to go out tomorrow on a normal video. So that's why I allowed the day. But anyway, thanks everybody for joining us here. I'm going to have to stop moving because it's blurring. Big thanks to everyone for joining us here. I hope you enjoyed it. Good night from all of us at Tram Town and Blackpool. Happy Halloween and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.